Welcome back, friends. Today, we're going to paint this beautiful scene close to my home in Montana. You'll see it start from a meager sketch all the way through to a finished painting. You'll see all the steps, color mixing, brush techniques, and design changes. I'll include this sketch and other instructional material in a free download below. So let's get started. Although this is a beautiful scene, I thought this barge of rocks here was taking up way too much of the scene. I also thought there could be a little more pretty blue water coming down in through here. And on the right hand side, I thought there could be a little more water and reflection here. So as you'll see, I'll make these changes as we go. First, I lubricate the canvas with a medium called liquid. This also helps speed up the drying process of the oil. The main purpose, however, is to help the colors blend together in the sky. This is a mixture of cerulean blue and ultramarine blue together. The cerulean has a little more turquoise color to it. The sky will get more turquoise-like and lighter as it gets closer to the horizon. Thus, I add a little white also. As you can see, the mountains in the background are very light blue. Of course, I do this with ultramarine blue and titanium white. A tiny bit of alizarin crimson makes a very light violet color. I really like this strip of warm prairie color. As things get closer to us, they get warmer in color. This darker blue here just works as an undercolor. You'll see how that works in just a moment. And now I'm mixing up several shades of green, three shades to be exact. I never use any commercial greens. I mix them up myself with Payne's gray and lemon yellow. The deeper the green I need, the more Payne's Gray I use. Now you'll see I'm putting that darkest shade of green on top of the blue. As the colors mix together on the canvas, that green will look farther off in the distance. I'm just adding a little bit of burnt umber for the tree on the right, just to add some variety. It also helps that tree look a little bit closer because of the warmer color. A little more blue in those distance trees helps with some of the shadows. Now I'm adding just a little more medium on the lower part of the canvas. This not only helps the colors blend together, but it also helps me work the color into the canvas, which is important for these under colors. Now, as you can see, the warmer color helps us visualize things closer to us. Now you'll see I'll be mixing all kinds of warmer colors together. The rest of the way down the canvas, I'm just blocking in preliminary colors. And I want to work these into the canvas as deep as I can. You see how these warmer colors push those mountains way off in the distance. I'm making a very strong violet color by mixing Payne's Gray and Alizarin Crimson. It works very well for deep shadows.
burnt umber warms up the right side just a little bit. Here you can see how well that violet color works in the deep shadows. We never want to use straight black, it's just too flat. You'll see I added a little violet in the blue there, in the water in that deep little pocket there. Now with a clean brush, I'm just working it into the canvas with little circular motions as, as well as I can. This really helps the next stage of paint stick to the canvas. That's also a, a clean brush on the tops of those trees, just kind of blurring them out just a little bit so they, they don't have such sharp edges. And that should be all we need of the medium. You'll see me mixing reds and greens together. This uh, makes a great early fall color, as opposed to the bright spring green colors you'll see in the springtime. Reds also work well in the shadows, but you'll see me add a little more violet to those distant trees later. You see how a little more white in that green really helps it pop. And there you see a little bit more violet going into the dark shadows. You can see here how easy it is to cover over the under color. Here I'm just mixing a little more white into the pre-mixed violet color for that bank off in the distance. And a little more of the deeper violet color for the shade or shadow underneath the trees. This shadow color here is a mixture of the deepest violet color and the deepest green color that we've already mixed up. This is that area I wanted to bring down the water and the reflection a little closer to the bottom of the picture. I've added a little burnt umber to the deeper violet color, and possibly a little more white. I kind of want to exaggerate that red color and some of the little orange, a little bit of the orange color. Again, here I'm adding just a little bit of white into the green color that I had pre-mixed.
It's here with the palette knife scraping is just a good example of how we can change something very simple. Just wanted to use a brush with some very long, loose bristles here to soften up things just a little bit. A little more detail with just the very edge of the uh, palette knife. That pre-mixed violet color works well here in this tree, in the shadows of this tree. And I've mixed just a little bit of uh, burnt umber there also, right on the canvas. Here I wanted to slow things down a little bit as we work on the foreground. I'm working with a filbert brush here, which is slightly flat. And I'm putting burnt umber right out of the tube on one side and white on the other. Very quickly, but very lightly, I move the brush over the canvas and roll it at the same time. That makes a variety of light and dark shadows. Since now we're putting thick paint on top of thick paint, the colors quickly mix together. Another good example here of how well the palette knife works in blending colors together. As the water starts to come closer to us, I'll start making it a darker blue. more just very light touches of the white in the water fast and loose you can see me here rolling that filbert brush a little bit more blending with the palette knife. A little more burnt umber right out of the tube with a touch of straight white on the other side of the brush.
you'll notice here that since there's already pretty thick paint on the canvas when I put a color that is pure right out of the tube when I get it onto the canvas it mixes and blends quite well just very light touches where we want the darker colors It's very easy to want to put too much detail in the foreground. Keep it loose. Notice that I've mixed some violet into the blue color for the close water here. Fast and loose strokes makes it look like the water is moving. Well, there it is. I hope you've enjoyed watching this as much as I enjoyed painting it. Help other artists find this video by clicking that like button. I'm Stephen Rathburn. Thanks for watching. <laughs>